My name is Caitlin Roper, and yes, I'm different than the other Caitlin. Well, most of you know me, but some of you might just think I'm the chorister who's always running around and hurting children. I was new at Grace as a senior in high school, so I did not get a chance to speak then. Since this was my senior year in college, Mother Lord gave me permission to speak today. When I was little, we used to attend church every Sunday. I'd go to Sunday school and then sing the children's choir. My family would do the Christmas pageant every year, and my dad would sing the choir concerts. I would go and pout that mom didn't let me bring a book to read. Eventually, we fell out of that church and ended up in another one. I did all the same things as before, and we were happy there. Unfortunately, after my parents attended Interfaith Seminary, an intern rector worked very hard to exclude our family from the church. So we left. After that happened, I discovered the joys of having Sunday mornings all to myself. I could sleep in, have hot chocolate, and watch the Sunday morning news, do homework, and enjoy the general peace of no responsibilities or services. But in 2008, that changed. My brothers started coming here to Grace Church. They attended rehearsals and services, and they came home all excited, telling me I had to come to church. I rolled my eyes and went back to sleep. <laughs> Then they dragged my parents here. Suddenly, I had four voices I love and trust very much telling me I had to come to church again. More to get them to stop than anything, I finally relented. I agreed to come one time. I sat down with my mom for the 9 a.m. service on St. Francis Sunday. <laughs> I didn't know they even let that many animals into a church ever. Amidst all the noise of happy or anxious pets, all I remember is how amazed and awed I was by the size and talent of the children's choir that did the music for the service that day. A week later, Dr. Ann had me in Friday rehearsals to prepare the Red Requiem, and I never left. I don't consider myself a religious person, though I am very spiritual. For me, music is what makes my spirit soar, and I found that here. Dr. Ann's training helped me become a better musician. And when I was a freshman in college, I took the job as her choir assistant. As you will see during the offertory anthem, I conduct the chapel choir. Friday rehearsals can be fun, dramatic, even trying at times. But when the kids stand on those steps and sing their hearts out, I know I'm doing good work. They even teach me a thing or two. They remind me to smile and have fun, even if I'm having an off day. And they make me smile and they have arguments over who likes raisins more, or who is the oldest, or even know, who knows all the lyrics to Frozen the best. <laughs> they are a true joy to teach, and I love each one of them. It is hard to see so many of them graduate to the right practice this fall. In addition to Dr. Ann's influence, I've been very blessed by the community here. People care about me and frequently ask after my health and activities. I recently graduated from Fairleigh Dickinson University, just up the road, but before you all applaud and congratulate me, I'm not quite done yet. I have one more year of schooling before I'm finished. I'm completing a five-year program to become a high school English teacher. The last four years have not always been smooth sailing, and that is where Grace has surprised me. I want to say a special thank you to Mother Lauren, whose compassion and empathy helped me when I was at my lowest low. She listened when I needed it, and she supported me when I struggled. I never expected to find a community that cared about me the way the Grace community has, and I feel blessed that you have all welcomed me and helped me to become the person I am today. Thank you.